Bulls Nation and welcome in to the CHGO Bulls Podcast presented by PointsBet. Don't forget that promo code CHGO when signing up to live your bet life. I'm Peck. You can follow me on Twitter at Bulls underscore Peck. That's my guy Big Dave. He's on Twitter at Bow BAWL Sports. Will the Goat Gottlieb on Twitter at Won't Gottlieb. We are CHGO underscore Bulls coming to you live here from our West Loop Studios downtown Chicago. Welcome back, everybody. We did our uh, audio-only pod yesterday. Yeah. Go check that out in your podcast feeds if you haven't already. We got our producer, Joey, hanging out with us today. Joey! One of the MVPs of our CHO softball team's uh, first-ever victory last night. Yes, I have questions. Did complete you pitch, I have, complete you pitch, no game from pitcher Joey. <laughs> Phenom, you I guys. So a, many questions. A regular Wade Miley. Oh, oh we were at that? the Cubs game last night. My cousin Eric is here in studio with us, hanging hey, out. Eric. Shout out to Eric, <laughs> hanging out with us. We went to the Cubs game last night. Yeah, Wade Miley pitched a gem. Almost a he had a perfect game through like six innings, right? Mm. And Wilson Contreras grand slam. Never seen a grand slam in person before. It was wow. very cool. Nice man. That's Jake, what you do. Jake was asking me if person. I needed some ice for my arm. How is you know, that today? arm doing today, Joey? It's all right. It's actually a little bit sore, like in the back area, the mm. legs. You're getting Peck, old, man. Peck was uh. Flying around the outfield Dude. yesterday. Yeah, flying around the right. outfield, yep. making a yep. damn fool of myself. How many drinks in were you? I just had one beer. Oh, so you were able to. Okay, like, that makes sense. I didn't pregame our softball game. Why not? Because I already knew I was going to be rusty and not coordinated, having not played softball in, oh, I don't know, almost two decades. Fair. I didn't need to add alcohol to that. How were you batting, though? How was the batting? I went one for two. There you go. So right. I think, uh, you That's know, great. Joey would that back me up on this. I got robbed on a uh, infield flyout rule mm -hmm. because. That was a crap call. Their shortstop Sorry, just flat out dropped it. It's like the infield flyout rule is designed to prevent purposefully dropping balls Correct. that you can use to get double plays, Correct. right? Correct. But that like their their shortstop just committed a gross error and didn't catch it. Wow. So I got robbed on that, but my first at bat was an infield hit that absolutely should have been turning a quick two. So it was like, you know, I won some, <laughs> I lost some. How were you at the plate, Joey? Popped out the first two times, but I did have a, a nice uh, game tying RBI. Nice. Uh there Nick you go. Nick's friend I forget his name. I think it's Ben. Brett? Brett? Or Ben. Ben. Big boy? I mean, this, boy guy, this guy could be heading clean up for the Cubs. Oh. He was large. <laughs> he, he was, was large. Large and in charge. He And he, I think we were down two, and he came up with, I mean, I'm pretty sure there was two outs. We were down two. He literally hit one to the other field. Right. And Three run game, triple. Tied the game. Damn. Um, but it was a, a promising first game. You know, right. we'll have to get uh, Goat Lieb and Big Dave out there sometime. I'm looking forward to it, actually, man. Joey Otani over here, man. Joey doing his thing, Otani. baby. Yeah. <laughs> doing his thing. I, Joey's not allowed Joey's to miss a game all season because if he does, I don't know who's pitching. Oh, I do. I love pitching. Okay, well. That's my favorite thing to do. Good to know. But I have to actually show up to actually do some pitching. <laughs> you know, I have to actually start. do it. Like, yeah, I love doing it. You're coming? Sorry. <laughs> Can't make it. But good game, Joey. Good game, guys. Proud hey, man. Guys. Good game. A win is a win. Did you catch a ball? Oh, yeah. I know you were flying around. I also bobbled you? several. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the first ball that came to I was playing. So you play like four outfielders, so yeah. like left, left center, right center, it's and four right. four outfielders? Yeah. Okay. Um, they played 10 in the field instead of nine. Okay. Uh, first one that came to me, it had some pace on it. And I was really excited about like running up to it to make the play instead right. of just letting the ball come to me. Right. right? You got to attack the ball. Sure. I attacked it, fell right over my own two <laughs> feet. <laughs> but then I actually recovered and had a really nice yeah. throw to home to Joey. Okay. But we didn't get the tag out at home. Did that feel good? Like getting that out of the way? Oh, I was like, oh, yeah. I embarrassed myself right, in the first right, inning. Right. Great. Completely. We're different. all smooth sailing from okay. here. It Joe's is crazy because Matt's like throwing the ball in the relay. He doesn't even have to look. We've got so much chemistry now for the show. Mm. We're, I'm just there. We didn't make the relay. Mm. That was my fault. But, mm. you know, it's just crazy. You know, chemistry carrying over from the studio and onto the diamond. Gonna, it's only going to grow. Joe. Who, final question. Who impressed you the most out there? 
Besides Big Boy with the bat. Like, uh, I thought Nick was pretty good and left. I thought Kevin had a good at bat, an important and at bat. My buddy Jules, Jules, one of the ringers Jules, that I brought. Jules played a phenomenal third base. All star third baseman. Oh, it's Matt he calls had, them Pex Ringers. Pex That's Ringers. Dude, well, I brought three, and they all are better than me at softball. They all played well, and Nick also <laughs> brought a friend that played shortstop, and he was he was an important piece as well. Yeah. Okay. All right, man. All right. So not very many actual CHGO. (laughs) No, that's not true. That's That's not. That is false. That's not what the jersey says. That is false. (laughs) They play for for what's on the jersey, sir. What's on the jersey. That's true. They they are now honorary members of CHGO. play for the name on the front, not on the back. That's right. And I was wearing my CHGO Cubs shirt. Did you guys have a lot of uh, spirit? (laughs) I knew this was coming. Why? Damn it. Wait, also, Peck fully had like a beard last night. He did what? You looked way different to me. When you showed up, you, like you had the five man? o'clock shadow going on. Is that going on every day, or is no, that? No, it was just was that all was weekend. A, it built up all weekend, and it was it was a, a Monday <laughs> after having a weekend, and okay. then a Monday doing a remote yeah, pod, okay. That's uh, audio only. Yeah, you know, he let week, himself go. Who bit. shaves on the weekend? Ca- I don't. He calls you a, a werewolf. It's what he just calls. you. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Uh, yeah, no, I don't. It's not your thing. No. Yeah, it's well, not I, I was do. like, you don't shave on the weekends, do you? And I'm like, no, you actually just have oh, a beard. I, th- no, I, I thought it looked good. It grows. Yeah. I <laughs> thought it looked good for sure. <laughs> Joey was impressed is, is what's important. Well. He always rocking the five o'clock shadow. Stash, so. do you? <sighs> I, I don't think there's any evidence of that. <laughs> 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 All right. Let's, let's move Should on and actually basketball? talk about what we're here to talk about today, which is continuing our uh, 21-22 season player evaluations. And we are going to do the Rook. Mr. Io DeSumo today, and then at the back end of the show, we'll touch on this Eastern Conference final series that we got tipping off tonight. Mm. Game one, mm. Celtics Heat. Yeah. Give you all our thoughts and predictions on that. But first, let us begin these Io grades. Um, take our initial look here, starting with offense. Um, we actually have a decent range here. I, I have uh, the, the highest grade for Io at B. Big Dave, you went with a B minus, and Will with a C plus. For me, these were based off of, uh, and that's sort of how I've been grading all these Bulls players and these Mm -hmm. uh, evals, is like compared to my beginning of season expectations. Mm -hmm. We know that Io, like some of, you know, his Bulls teammates was in a bit of a slump in the final stretches of this season. But compared to my expectations for him, the fact that he played 77 games this season, one of the most available players the Bulls had, started 40 of those 77, Mm -hmm. and... I thought did a pretty darn good job playing backup, backup, starting point guard at times. Yeah. And look at his shooting splits from his rookie year, 52, almost 38 from behind the three-point line, and 68 from the free throw line. Like 52 and 38? Yeah. I'm loving those those shooting splits from Io. And, you know, he was never a dominant scorer for the Bulls, but right. compared to my expectations offensively, I thought he had a solid B, Dave, take it away. Yeah, I completely agree with you on that. I, I looked at also what the things you looked at, but for me it was more so him being a, a second-round rookie coming in and a guy who we expected to be in the G League. And he came in from game one and contributed for the Chicago Bulls. Anything he gave us, for me, was just absolute gravy. Like, I could honestly, I could have justified giving him an A- for what he did offensively, for some of the things I saw him do. Um, that game against Boston where he didn't miss a shot. Uh, he The passes he made, you know what I'm saying, those no looks. The, the chemistry he developed with Vooch early on and how nice those guys look together. Mm-hmm. And he just never looked rattled at any point in time during the season. Even when he was going through his slump, he still looked the same. It was the same motion going through the same way. But I was completely impressed with him offensively. I didn't think he was going to have – his three-point shot would kind of translate to the NBA just because of how it looked. Yeah. And but it did the first half of the season. Excuse me, it did the first half of the year, but it didn't the second half. But it looks it looked like it was okay. I still think you should work on it. You know what I'm saying? A little bit more, make it a little more uh, uh, cohesive and nice looking. You know what I'm saying? But if it's going in, I'm not going to be mad at him. But yeah, overall, I thought he was solid offensively for a rookie in the second round coming in, being asked to contribute immediately to a team that went to the playoffs. Yes, he gives a B minus for me. Yeah, I think looking at my grade now, I probably should have pushed it up to a B minus. But uh, I think he, the perception of him was pushed up a little bit just due to like a month, solid month and a half where he was like awesome. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the season, I just think he, I mean, it took him a while to get sort of integrated. And then he had this stretch where Lonzo and Crusoe were out and he was like locking up Trey Young 
and like nobody could score on him. He was guarding, you know, just every team's best player. Um, but if you look at just some of the overall stats by the end of the year, the Bulls were better with him off the floor, mm. which I think is in part due to the fact that they really struggled down the stretch mm. and that he had to play really heavy minutes because of all these injuries. Um, and then just in the playoffs, I think it wasn't like disappointing because again, second round rookie, um, but he became part of the rotation and I think they really needed somebody to step up and hit threes. And at, by the end of the year, I mean, he was one of those guys where the shot just stopped falling and I think it got in his head a little bit. So, um, I think the reason why I gave him a C plus and again, probably would have pushed it up to a B minus if I could do it again, but it was just, it was very up and down. I don't think it was like as home run of a season mm -hmm. as most people would perceive, but that's not to say he was bad. Cause I think he was awesome. And that's mm -hmm. just like found money in the second round. Like <laughs> yeah. if you yeah. can hit on those guys in the draft, second round picks, mm -hmm. like that can completely change mm -hmm. the trajectory of your franchise. So all in all, very happy with Io. Uh, definitely got some stuff to work on. Mm -hmm. I'm excited that Demar really took him under his wing, and mm -hmm. you know he's going to absorb that information, and gonna, he's going to get a lot better. Speaking of which, Brett in the comments said, "I wonder if Io is also going to the Summer of Hell workouts with Pat." Uh, oh, I wouldn't mind if he did. I'm sure, he, I'm sure yeah. he will. I'm sure he will be. He's got to be there, man. But yeah, like you're completely right. But just to take on that position of point guard, you know what I'm saying, and. And run it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, I think that's what I was the most impressed with. Like, it never looked too much for him. I was yeah. waiting for that moment where it just kind of overwhelmed him. And it never did. He definitely hit a rookie wall, yeah. for sure. But just those moments of it being overwhelming for him or like, oh, my God, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, here goes the stupid turnover. You know what I mean? Right. The only silly things or things that I shouldn't say silly, but the things I disagree with were when he would go to the cup and lay it in instead of going in for a dunk. And yeah. he would get it blocked and get it thrown. And then he started dunking it after that. So I love the way, I love the fact he's a sponge. You know what I mean? He always was trying to learn and figure some new things out and apply it to his offense. We talked about what he did with Bradley Bill when Bradley Bill showed him a move and mm. he did it immediately. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Bradley Bill's like, dude, didn't mean right now. He <laughs> said, don't wait. As soon as you get that ball, make a decision to go. Right. And then he did it and burned baseline. <laughs> Deal. Like, I, oh, I love that. I love that about him, man. <laughs> so, yeah, I was just I was overall impressed, especially with a guy people weren't sure of. Some people wanted – a lot of people wanted Sharif Cooper instead of him. So, yeah. And I want to – I want to like cop that. Pell, I, was, I was – and me too. I was Oh, really? Oh, you yeah. real? oh I didn't know that. And it's another one of those situations where, obviously, I was way wrong, and I has been awesome. Um but I mean, it's it's like contextual and it's situational. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, Io just impressed me so much. And so I don't know if you want to save this for the overall aspect, but like, what is his offensive upside to you guys? In, in what sense? What do you mean? Just like, where, what do you think? Like, best case scenario, he turns out to be as oh, an offensive I mean, player. I, I, best case scenario is a guy that your you know your coach can confidently start on any given night as your starting point guard or your starting two guard. Correct. Mm -hmm. Because he's shown us that he has that ability yeah. between his three seasons at U of I and his rookie season here with the Bulls that he's comfortable playing either of those backcourt spots. Yeah. And he's comfortable handling the ball. And, and, you know, if there's maybe something he needs to be doing a little bit better is, is how to be dangerous playing off the ball. Yeah. Sometimes you saw him use those opportunities and those spaces, making backdoor cuts. And, and you know, we didn't see a whole lot of Io as any kind of like, you know, playing a two-man game with two guards where one of them's a role man. Like, yeah. is that something that Io can add to his game? Um, and, you know, of course, p another part of that, what's the ceiling, is he becomes a, a sharpshooter yeah. behind that three-point line. I think line. that's going to be huge for him this summer is working on the mechanics, the speed, the release, and just the confidence with the jump shot. Yeah. That, I think, is like his swing skill in terms of what his upside is. And then also, I mean, we got the Drew Holiday comp quite a bit this year. Very I think so. there's some truth to it. But uh, he, I mean... He's a very solid defender. I want to see him take another step there and just become that, like, really lockdown point of attack guy because mm -hmm. the Bulls have Caruso. They've got Lonzo. But, like, when you include a third shutdown defender in that mm -hmm. lineup, it just makes you so much more difficult. So, uh, we can, I don't know if you want to transition that into the defense, but yeah. uh, definitely – Really, I think the the upside there on both sides is like is for real. On his shooting, I, I think that is where he leaves the most to be desired. But I think that there is like a, you know we we all know what kind of guy he is. I think just from from afar, but he just seems like a really hard worker. Mm -hmm. Look at the stats from when he was in Illinois uh, that sophomore year: twenty nine percent from sure. three. The next year, thirty nine percent, and he, and then takes the jump, and he's still at thirty seven on 
yeah. decent volume. And, yeah, like I said, he's a hard worker. I think I, w- I would be surprised if he doesn't continue to get better at that. Yeah, and to answer your question, yeah, the sharp shooting, being a better three-point shooter, as Joey just pointed out, is definitely a, a ceiling for him. And I've been going back and forth in my head about where I want him at, that one or that two. Mm-hmm. I, I liked him at both, honestly. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think, where the Drew comp can come in. Yeah, where right. He can yeah. really, you know, like we've talked about with Caruso, like he was the guy that could actually bring the ball up the court in the right, playoffs, right. get it to DeRozan in his spots. I think Io can add that to his game. Correct. I also think he can spot up, space the floor, and just be that – you know, lockdown defender. So yeah. he's, and you know, Dave, as you mentioned a few minutes ago with IO, a rookie who was just kind of thrust into a role of being a starting point guard for a large stretch of the season. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you weren't seeing him continually make the kind of mistakes you would expect rookies to make when their ball handling all of a sudden right. goes up significantly. Mm-hmm. There, there were a, a handful of silly IO turnovers that I can recall from this season, but not that many. And yeah. you look and that's confirmed he had better than a two to one assist to turnover ratio this season. Uh, three point three assists per game to just one point four turnovers. Significantly better than a it's two to man. one assist to turnover ratio. <laughs> Seventy seven for a rookie games. who didn't think he'd be a starting wow. point guard at any and point this that's, season. That's I think key there is that this is not a situation where he's just like coming in in garbage time. Like he got thrust into a starting job where he was competing against other starters. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so to have the, those numbers against the level of competition. Is really impressive. Yeah, it is. Uh, all right, with that, let's move now to our thoughts on Io's season on the defensive end mm-hmm. and those grades. Joey, can we take another look at that grade graphic, please? Uh, so I went with a C plus. Big Dave mm-hmm. B minus. Uh, Will C plus. So we were all a little bit closer together on our grades for Io's season defensively. Uh, what, if anything, good or bad, stuck out to you the most uh, from what you saw on Io on the defensive end, Will? Yeah, I think, like I said, he had some moments where he just looked like an absolute stopper. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they were probably a little overblown just because um, the highlights always stand out, right? Sure. Like, you remember the great plays, you don't necessarily remember all the bad ones. Sure. But I also don't think this was a situation where you're, like, screaming at Kobe for giving up another backdoor layup. So <laughs> he, I too. think, was very solid. Um, I don't think he was, like, great. Um, and that's you know, where the, the C plus comes in. But again, I think this is probably a situation where I'd bump it up to a B minus, uh, given the expectations, given, um, you know, the role that like he, again, with the starter thing, like Mm. the ability to compete at that level against other starters, I think counts for something. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I think he, he really impressed me there. Yeah. I, again, I was more impressed on the defensive end for me. Um, and for me, and, and like you said, you remember the good more so you remember the bad. And all that's popping up in my head is that stretch of time where he was locking down good point guards in this league. Trey Young, he hated Trey Young hated him for, for a while. He could <laughs> like not two stand straight him. games. I'm, yeah, it was crazy. It wasn't until that last game where Trey Young uh, later in the season, you know, where Trey Young just went crazy on them, man. But before that, Trey was struggling against him, man. Guards were having a hard time with his length, mm-hmm. with his athleticism, and with his IQ because he wasn't making the same mistake twice against them. Once they burned him one way, he wouldn't let you burn him again that same way. And that's impressive for a dude that's the yeah. first time in the league, man. That's stuff you got to learn that he was just absorbing right then and there. So he came in, I think, with that being his upside more than anything was the defense. That's yeah. what everybody would talk about more so. And we saw it on full display, you know what I'm saying, against these teams, man. So I'm like, oh, it, and, it, and like you're right, like having that third guy that's your defensive, it just made his defense better having Caruso and having Ball out there with him. It made it easier for him so he can pick and choose his victim that way because he knows who those guys are taking. Those, they're taking the best. So who's your third best? Because Io's better than your third best. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it was easier for him to get on there. And then when you guys saw him when he would get in transition, it was, it was buckets all day long. So, yeah, I, I was completely impressed with him uh, defensively. Uh, and, again, he hit that wall in that second half of the year. And mm-hmm. then just everybody kind of figured him out, had his name on the chalkboard, and right. figured him out. And then, yeah, it and went I down. I think, yeah, that's, that's an important thing here, too. Like, looking back at some of these um, all-in-one metrics, I think this – weighed uh, a little bit more heavily into my grade than it probably should have because a lot of these rely on the on-off splits yeah. of like how you perform when a player is on the court versus when he's not. And as we all know, the Bulls were just a different team for the last half of the year. And those numbers were all 
affected by that. So obviously Io being on the floor was part of the Bulls not being as good, mm -hmm. which counts against him. But also I think a lot of it was just like overperforming in the first half, underperforming in the second half, mm -hmm. um, and just, yeah, kind of affecting some of these numbers where it probably, if you look at the context, is not as bad as it may seem. Mm. The thing that I, I'm encouraged about with Io defensively, and, and you're, I agree with you, Dave, I, his length is very encouraging to me as far as what he can become as a defensive player in the yeah. NBA. And we've already seen glimpses of his rookie year. His hands and the length that's attached to his hands are already really quick, like yeah. NBA quick. True. What I want to see him do next is have his footwork and his hips catch up mm. to how quick his hands already are. Mm. Okay. Because you saw him struggle at times, I thought this season, or I did, with getting his hips situated the right way when he's trying to fight around or over a screen, mm -hmm. uh, when he's trying to like lock up a guy who has him beaten, he's trying to recover. I feel like his footwork and his hips are a little behind mm. the the level that his hands uh already are okay you, you know you you're talking about the way that he could create some turnovers because he's not only a guy that has great length and quick hands but he's smart yeah. for a rookie very this season so. very very smart in reading passes and reading passing lanes i just want his hips and his feet to get to where his hands already are you don't want his hips to lie no yeah i got you Makes shakira sense. made that song for a reason yes she did she knew there was a young basketball player by the name Io DeSumo I think that, on I mean, the up and up. You're right. That's like probably one of the reasons why he fell is that, because that counts towards athleticism, right? Yeah. Like how yeah. nimble he is, how mm. agile. And I think like the, one of the low lights or whatever that you want to call it, that stands out to me was, um, I can't remember, was it against the Clippers or the Bucks where he had the steal against, I think it was Drew Holiday in the beginning yeah. of the game and he ran down the court and kind of got rim stuffed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, and God, it just, yeah. it's like, yeah, I mean, he's not just, yeah. he's not a super explosive athlete. I think that's okay. He does make up for a lot of it with his length, but um, I think it's something that Zach ran into, Pat ran into, Kobe mm -hmm. ran into, of just like learning how to get over those screens, mm -hmm. learning how to position your body so that you don't, you know, get stuck or that mm -hmm. you don't give up a, a driving lane. Mm -hmm. Um, and these are things that you can overcome with experience that maybe like, you know, you don't have your first year. And so the, the, it's not like he's unathletic cause he's obviously right. very athletic, but right. like the limitations right. of his athleticism aren't going to be so like exposed. in I think future years. Yeah, I agree with that. People in the comments, uh, also enjoying remembering the, uh, the IO jail that Trey this? Young was put in. Stefan saying he put Trey in IO jail twice. Yeah, he did. Our guy Hayes saying Trey's still having nightmares about IO. Yes, he is. Uh, that is a fact. Uh, all right, we'll continue with our grades for IO, including our meathead grades coming up next. Yeah. But first, quick reminder to y'all that today's episode is brought to you by CHGO's best friends. Over at Points Bet. Points and the best way to support CHGO is to download that Points Bet app mm -hmm. and use promo code CHGO when you sign up to live your bet life. And if you do that right now, you're going to get those two risk free bets up to $2,000. But that's not all. If you make a $50 or more first time deposit, yeah. you'll receive a free CHGO membership, what? which unlocks all kinds of amazing stuff. Our awesome web content, like the written player grades that Will's been working on right now. I'll have a fresh pegging order for you guys on Friday. Trademark. Mark K doing some writing every once in a while. Big Dave. Australia. John Down Bulls thoughts. Plus everybody else on I all the actually. other beats covering our Chicago teams. Plus you're going to get a free CHGO shirt. Anyone you want from the CHGO locker. And access to our members only Discord channels. That's 2,000 of free bets. A free CHGO membership. A free t-shirt from the CHGO locker. All for making that $50 or more first time deposit at points bet. Super easy. Mm. And because it's Tuesday, you know what that means? What that means? It's the points bet pick, pick of the, the week. week. Come on with it. We're going to be looking at Celtics Heat Easter Conference Finals in our final segment today. All right. Here's a little preview for you. Preview pick of the pick? week. All right. Celtics are getting plus money on the money line in game one tonight. And I know, Will, in our episode yesterday, or maybe it was before we were even recording, you're saying, eh, you know, maybe this is kind of a trap game for the Celtics as much as it can be for a team that's on the road in game He's one. He's been dead on with that too, by the way. I'm, dude, I, th I think the Celtics are the significantly better team. I'm rolling with they them. They are definitely the significant. The Celtics are plus 110 on the money line for game one tonight. Mm. Give mm. me them 
Celts. All right. That's your points bet pick of the week, y'all. Parlay pick, in effect. Will, is your cousin Eric a points bet guy? Have we brought so him into the fold we yet? We brought him into the fold. Get him yeah. over here. Get on him up. Right Eric, here. get over there. Come on. <laughs> get on camera. What do you got tonight? Welcome. Points bet man. Come over here. A cousin in the goat family. Give it up for Eric, everybody. <laughs> cousin of the goat. We got to get you closer to the mic or you won't be able to hear. Yeah, um, I signed up for points bet on the way over today. Okay. Signed up for points bet. All right. P- placed a bet on Jaden Ivey. Right? To go yeah, first Jake overall in the draft. Oh, nice. We're, we're getting a, l- a little Love bit ahead of ourselves. But he's going to get that uh, <laughs> CHGO membership. Yeah. Two free bets up to $2,000. There you yes. go. And he gets that T-shirt. And the T-shirt. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm wearing one right now. Look at that. And by doing all well of those done. things, Eric, you aren't, just, you aren't just living. What are you doing? What are you living? My bad Living. Go on! Come on. Come on. Come on. Way to pull that one out, Eric. Way to pull that one out. And if you <laughs> sign up, then you can come on our show and tell people about how you signed up. So that's, that's right. That's apparently how that works. And you can say you're living your bet life. I promise you. That's a guarantee. It will happen. That Boom. was awesome. Bow. All if you that. sign up for points bet and come to the studio, there's like a 65% chance we'll let you come on, on the camera. <laughs> 75, but yeah. 100. <laughs> if you, you want to take the read, you might. Yeah, I don't know why I said 65. It's like unless 95. You're being nice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Unless, unless you're like one of those weird people who's like a Bulls fan, but then also somehow like a Packers fan. Then you're definitely not allowed on this set. <laughs> See, I can't help you there, man. You know, who, who, you gotta deal with security. Who? Oh, those people who? exist. Oh, they exist. They exist, they exist for exist. sure. Their thing. Their these thing. People who have these weird like crosses of towns yeah. and cities and Just loyalties. Contrarians. Yes. Yeah, correct. They're strange people. They and are. By that I mean, I think they're actually aliens. Anthony Davis is a Packer fan. Isn't yeah, he? that's he what I'm talking about. Yeah. How the hell are you a Packers fan, Anthony Davis? Ugh. I don't want that crap. But you'll take them on the team. Nope. Don't want them. Don't oh, need them. All right. I'll take Get them out of here. All right. We're going with the meathead stuff <laughs> early. Yeah, you, better, you better tell them. You better tell them, Joey. Going early with it. You mean that guy that never plays? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can't wait to get him on my team. It's not like the Bulls have an injury issue anyway already, <laughs> as it is. Who's near we worried about more? Zach or Lonzo's? Let's throw Anthony Davis into the mix. <laughs> Get out of here. I'll take that risk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> so speaking of meathead, let's move on to our meathead grades. Um, Big Dave, I'm pretty sure I can guess what yours is. I think you can. It's not hard. It's not hard. Point guard of the future. Very good. I was just getting there. Expand upon that. Well, I thought I was going to put something else. I was going to put uh, something like, you know, the kid from Chicago or something right. like that. But I was like, No. This is what I want him to aspire to be. <laughs> this is exactly what I want on his mind. And with Lonzo going through what Lonzo's going through, and then hearing that news again yesterday, and maybe I asked you, Will, I was like, is this something the Bulls would be looking at in the draft now because of that? I want him to have this on his mind. Like, dude, there might be a vacancy for you to be the point guard of the Chicago Bulls. And we haven't had that kind of legit straight-up point guard since the last guy from Chicago was the guy here in Chicago being the point guard. So I think there's something there. There's a position that he can go ahead and fulfill for this team, man. And he's got a place on this squad already. Like, that's a given. He's he's got a place here. Whether he's coming off the bench being the point guard, whether he's coming out to uh, replace Zach Levine, however you want to do it, whether he, hell, plays the three, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, when they run the small ball or something like that. He's got a place. But the point guard position is what he has an award for in college as being the best point guard in the land Mm -hmm. in college, the Bob Cousy Award. He has that. So I think he should be focusing on those kind of things coming in the next season, being that point guard for the Chicago Bulls, because it might be open. And I'm just being for real about it. I don't like saying that, but it might be available to him. And I just want him to be ready for that, man, coming into this season. And as we said earlier, the like playmaking aspect of his game, I think, was way more advanced than yes. I was ready for. Yes, so, very uh, much so. Ab- absolutely, he, he should have that on his mind. Uh, and, and Will, what uh, what do we have here for your <laughs> meathead? Grade? You got to say it like he's like it. Yeah, I got to hear you say for it. For those like who are just listening in podcast form, I used a GIF of uh, Larry David, and he's saying, "Pretty, pretty good." Pretty, there you go. Pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Joey. Oh. That's that's what I was this year. He was pretty good, mm-hmm. and it was a pretty damn good pick. Yes, and I'm just that was the thing that came to mind. I don't know why. I love it. It's right because it's true. He was. He was definitely that. And, and in that way, where you're like, yeah, 
Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty yeah. Pretty pretty you gotta make the face. With it. You gotta make the face. You got to. It. It's necessary. You can't can't gotta do Larry David correctly. Oh, God, I love Kirby Ruth. Yeah, <laughs> it's so good. I still show. haven't gone back like when they picked it back up, mm-hmm. when they brought the show back, have seen none of the new what? stuff that they've done. There's, oh man. I, who's dude. got the time? There's just so many shows dude. there's not enough time. That's true. Who's got the time? That's a lot. <laughs> That's a Larry David uh, who's got the argument time? right there. Who's got time? Who's got time? Like shows. I mean, something going on all the time here and there. I love it. It's a great uh, show. I, I love the. Uh, we we now have our first GIF form meathead grade. So we we like fill these out in a shared uh, Google spreadsheet, and I didn't know what Joey was going to do with this. I just put a link in there. So right, Joey, and I didn't. Job. I just saw that it was a GIF link and didn't know what it was. Yeah, I was, I'm, I'm glad you guys didn't. Uh, I'm glad you guys didn't click in. No, no, I, I was no. I, I like surprises. To be a surprise. Yeah, I want the surprises. That was uh, absolutely delightful. Uh, yours, sir, and mine. I'm. It, you, it's not too hard to guess. You guys want to take a shot? Not, you don't want to know what I'm thinking. <laughs> what it, you don't want to know what I'm thinking. So, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'd like to know what, what that is. Uh, mine is uh, SOTD, short for Steal the Draft. That's my meathead, Gray Fryo. There it is. Um, there it is. You, like, I'm sure other people might make other arguments. I mean, Herbert Jones went to the Pelicans at 35. Herb, Herb Jones Three picks before Io yeah. at uh, 38 for the Bulls. But it's, it's one of those two guys for who the steal of this uh, 2021 draft class is. Yeah. And... In my time of meatheadedness, I'm saying that Io was without a doubt the steal of this 21 NBA draft. I, I won't argue with that, man. Out of nowhere, nobody expected him to do anything. Remember, projected the BG League. When we talked about it, that's how we discussed it. Like, you know, yeah, let's see what it looks like in Summer League. He'll go down G League with Marco. They'll develop. Maybe they'll get chemistry together and they'll come back. He said, hell no. Game one. All right. Game one, he was contributing to this team in such a big way, man. The steals he would get on the inbounds. I remember that Celtics game like it was yesterday, man. He won that game for the Bulls, man. The threes he hit, the steals he got, the defense he played, the energy he gave. Like Another another situation where he probably got devalued because he's a little bit older. Mm. He's 22 coming in the draft. But that ended up being like a huge plus for the Bulls because – He's got the IQ and awareness and understanding of like yeah. how the game is played. He didn't have to like spend a season as a 19 year old getting Point. caught up. Yeah. He was just ready to go. It's a great point. It's a great point. Uh, and so to wrap up with our, our final thoughts and final grades for Io's uh, rookie season, B. you guys both with a solid B. I gave him a B plus just because again, compared to my expectations, kind of going what with you were talking about just now, Big Dave, mm-hmm. as far as what people expected from Io his rookie year, yeah. I did not see him having a significant role playing real minutes in Billy Donovan's rotation as a rookie. And given that forty game start stint that he had, well, you know, some of those were here and there and, you know, wherever else. But the mm-hmm. the the large chunk of that 40 starts uh, when the Bulls were really, you know, missing a lot of guys bumped up his rookie minutes per game to 27 and a half. Mm. I did not see Io playing wow. 27 and a half minutes per game as a rookie. Yeah. yeah. And the fact that he did it and it was more good than bad, mm-hmm. I, I gave him that plus sign next to the B. I, I'm with you. And you know, I used to say this to you a lot, Matt. The, the biggest compliment I could give Io was when Lonzo would go down, I wouldn't bat an eye. Because I was like, oh, no, Ayo's there. All right, we're good. Like, and I was completely okay with him being there. There was no panic in the fact that my point guard wasn't there Like, because I knew who I had behind him. It's the biggest compliment I can give to him, man, is I was like, dude, it was just one of the guys. And we all know how you me. feel about Lonzo, so that's, you know, that's high praise. You know how I feel about the big ball of brand, sir. Yes. Oh, that knee is concerning. Never lost. I think it's wild that Ayo went in the second round. Any other year – he would have been hands down by far the steal of the draft. Mm. And I I was thinking when you guys were like, I think in a couple of years we'll be looking back on this last draft class as as one of the best in the last 20 years or so. Like, it is crazy that a guy like Io, who played so many minutes for this Bulls team, is still probably, like, debatable all rookies second. Like, there was just a lot of good rookies in this class. there was a stretch where he was, like, potentially going to be all rookie first team there yes Mm -hmm. yes it was Um, was. for me i went b just because i think that like the overall experience was bigger than the sum of its parts Mm -hmm. like he had some flaws on defense he had some flaws on offense i think the playoff performance was probably weighed into the c pluses for me but when you talk about how good he was as a whole and what that can mean for his future as a player, but also the Bulls' future to have a 1.9 million guy who can play yes. who oh. can play heavy minutes. Like Great that, point. that goes a really long way. 
And as I said before, it's the kind of contract that allows you to go all in with the DeMar DeRozans, with the Zach Levines, mm -hmm. and give them money or be aggressive trading draft picks to bring in stars because you know you can fill out the rest of the roster. Right. And right. that's where we saw the Bulls have a real weakness this year in the playoffs. They didn't have enough depth. Nobody would really step up. I was going to only get better. Yes. And I think next time we're in this position, he will be ready for that moment. Because yes. you know the way that Billy's talked about him, the way that DeMar talks about him, like he is going to step to the moment. Hmm. And that experience is going to help him a lot. And, and that's one thing I want to see also, Will, that coming in the next season, what is he going to do? Because now his name is on the board. You know what I'm saying? About who we're looking at when we're playing the Chicago Bulls. His name is up there now. How does he respond to that now? Because you saw when they started – running things for him you know what i'm saying i'm talking about other teams when they start running things and training game planning for him he got a little you know all oh, snap as and rightfully so yeah. you know what i'm saying because it was his first time i get that but that now is, he knows that it's is coming. the rookie wall exactly exactly and now he knows it's coming now so now what is he going to do how does he respond to that i'm very interested to see and one more thing on that is the way that billy talks about him i think oh. is really encouraging mm -hmm. because the question of did he hit the rookie wall came up a ton and that was Billy's answer was that like, not really. It was just that he's like now on the scouting report. Mm -hmm. And what he said was, and we as a staff need to work with him to find solutions. Mm. It's not IO figure it out. It's right. we are going to work on this with him together right. to like develop his understanding of the game, how to, you know, make counters. So I, I think he is, it speaks to his coachability. Yeah. Agreed. And I think that is another sign of him just having a lot of room to improve. Yeah. I love Bulls fans in the comments who are like, okay, how do we how do we get Kofi? You know, because like clearly that's just, I think it's a stretch to to take Kofi with your 18, yeah. you know, your first round pick. Uh, and as our pal Hayes pointed out, the Bulls don't have a second rounder coming up this year. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, some projections have Kofi going as a mid to late second round pick. Mm. Some mm. people, some projections have Kofi Cogburn going undrafted. Mm. Uh, but I love that Bulls fans are like, get those teammates back together. Get Kofi in a Bulls jersey. I do think if he goes undrafted, I think the Bulls will take a swing on him. I do think that. And don't be surprised if they come up with a second-round pick. I'm just saying that. Like, I, I, I think they owe. Yeah. Don't they do They still Theirs have? goes, I think, to the Lakers yeah. this yeah. year, yeah. I believe. I wonder – so this is a question I have, and I, I don't know how I would even find the answer. But the Bulls owe in the tampering for the price of, like, tampering on Lonzo. Right. The league find them their next second-round pick Correct. because they are out like every year until 2026 or something. Yeah. Uh, no, but we're so trading they, Vooch Kobe in a first for Rudy Gobert, Will. We're good. But if we, <laughs> if they acquire a second round pick, does that one become the next and they have to give that to the league? That's a good question. You know what I'm I would imagine. Yeah, I, know, I, know exactly I would imagine saying. it has to be the pick that they would have gotten slotted to them. Yeah. Like I don't. I, I think they could probably trade for they somebody else. So if they buy into the second round, they would get. I that would pick. imagine. I'm not sure. I have to figure that out. Uh, all right. So let's uh, before we move on and talk about Eastern Conference Finals that are on deck tonight. Let's take a quick look at IO's offseason projection. So year two of his just two year rookie deal, just a two year deal because you know he was a second round pick. Right. Uh, it's non-guaranteed for just over $1.5 million. Right. You think they'll pick that up, that guarantee? I think they're picking that up. Good and, chance. Uh, Good so chance. for coming back, you know, I put 99%. Look, is there some crazy trade that AK and Eversley might get really aggressive and wild with this offseason where the team that they're making a trade with insists on taking IO back in that trade? Yeah. I'm, that's the only reason that that number is 99 Completely instead of 100. I agree with you. I'm 100% <laughs> with you. Completely. Uh, and then, you know, take a look at what his team role was this year and how it can grow next year. Anything else you guys would add to my areas of improvement? Mm. Uh, you know, I, I was talking about his his feet on the defensive end, mm -hmm. ball handling, maybe adding a few more weapons to his offensive arsenal. Um, and, I, and I also threw strength in there because, look, I, I think Io's got kind of a wiry frame as mm -hmm. it is right now. Mm -hmm. And it's not like you want him to, like, bulk up too much because you don't want him to lose any of his athleticism, as we've talked about him maybe not being, uh, you know, an uber-athletic guy to begin with. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you guys want to see Io maybe just add a little bit of muscle to his frame? Because, you know, there were some guys where it felt like Io was getting pushed around a little bit. He was a little bit, and yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing a little, little strength on him. That that would be great. That would be cool. I completely all right with it. And also, I agree with your offensive toolbox too, because I want him to get a move. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like yeah. he's got he's got to have a go to 
moves. He doesn't have. Once one teams yet. started to get some tape on him, exactly. the second half of the season, exactly. Oh, this is what you like to do, right? <laughs> We're taking that away. Thank yeah. you kindly. But also, he um he would have that move. Where he would you know the two dribbles to the mid range, then shoot. Right. You know that's what he would kept liking to do. So I just need him to get something. You know what I'm saying? Like a little shot to where teams. Just have to, you know, can't cheat off of him, right. you know, kind of thing. Or just know that, no, he's going to shoot a three. That's all he's going to do. No, let's go to – because he had – because he showed glimpses of all of those things, right? He showed glimpses of I can get to the bucket, you know what I'm saying, and score. I have a mid-range game. I got those things. But I just need that one move, that one uh, 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 that for sure – a little bit more wiggle. You know what I'm saying? A little, little more stank on it. That's it. You know what I mean? A little, little more the big toe in the pot. It'll be all right. That's all I need. That's all I need. And he'll, he'll be on point. For me, I think strength is a part of this. Um, I want to see him, because he's not that uber-explosive athlete, as we're talking about, mm. I want to see him learn how to pace and like start and stop a little bit more, okay. mm-hmm. shift direction. Uh, just like watching Luca. Obviously, he's not 6'9", like, you know, potentially greatest player of all time status. <laughs> but uh, just the way that he's able to use timing and his strength to absorb contact, mm. uh, kind of slow down fade away around the rim as opposed I mean I shot uh 66% at the rim which is tremendous for a guard mm-hmm. um but I just want to see him be able to get a little bit more creative because as teams do pick up on the scouting report mm-hmm. I think those shots become harder and then I also said this before but just like the the speed of his release on his jumper um that was kind of all over the place throughout the course of the season like mm-hmm. he went on streaks where he was shooting 45% he went on streaks where he was shooting 27% and yes, uh, yes. I want to see some more consistency and just confidence with the jumper because, you know, it's great to have another guy who can step in off a reversal pass and take a pull-up jumper. Yeah. But they, they need those guys to space the floor. Yes, very much so. so I think that's going to be really important, especially if Lonzo comes back healthy where he's not going to have the ball in his hands right. at all times. Right, true indeed. Uh, Renee in the comments uh, chiming in with, I needs to work out with Pat this summer and get those thunder thighs. I don't know about that. Thighs, baby. I think the thunder thighs are absolutely P-Dub's thing. Well, that's why I go to Also, I, I if I had thighs the size enough, of Pat's, they would look so weird on Io's there's an, frame. There's enough there. thigh in this world for everyone. See, <laughs> I defer to Will for all my thigh topics. That's who I go to right Pat's here. Pat's got the hips. I'll take the You're thighs. T- <laughs> <laughs> yes. Did Shakira ever write a song about people's thighs? Thighs don't lie. No, but and whether or songs, not they are truth tellers, no, there are definitely songs about thighs. <laughs> I, can, I can show you some. <laughs> you want to give us a quick rundown, Dave? <laughs> Maybe another show. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. So there it is. Those are our grades for Io Desumu, the Rook, the Morgan Park product, yeah. the U of I guy. I owe nothing but love to you from these three Bulls fans here. Right. Keep up the great work. Work hard this summer. Can't wait to see Io in a bolt back in a Bulls jersey next season. That's real. Now let's talk Easter Conference Finals. But Woo! before we talk Easter Conference Finals, Big Dave, give yes. people one more quick word about points bet. Oh, one more quick word about the points bet. This one goes out to Eric. If you enjoy CHGO, one way to tell you to help us to grow. I pause because you know that rhymes right there, and I like you that. You love rhymes. the rhyme. I do. I like. I like the pause rhymes. too. I love that. Yes, I do. Will very <laughs> much so. It's to download that points bet app and use that code CAGO when you sign up because not only are you getting those two count them one two risk free bets up to two thousand dollars, but if you make a fifty dollar or more first time deposit, you'll receive that free CHGO membership which unlocks all of that web content, and you even get that free T-shirt like that man Will the Thrill has on Woo! out of that C-H-G-O locker. All right. And all the people here in this beautiful state of Illinois who are dealing with this magical weather outside, mm. it is Fat Man Summer Outside, baby. Mm. Yes, it is about a low 69, 70 degrees. You see, I can have a sweatshirt and some mm. shorts on. This is my kind of weather. This is the summer for me right real, here. Real nice temp, 69 yes. degrees. Oh. Very nice temp. Very nice temp. Very nice temp. He's 12 years old. <laughs> you can all actually <laughs> download the Points Bet app right now and register your account from start to finish all from your phone. You'll be signing up with the fastest sports book, easier than ever, so you can start living your bet life in seconds. So what are you waiting for? Because once the game starts, you don't just bet. Thrill, tell them what you do. You live your bet life. Joey. I am a peacock. You gotta let me fly. Mm. That's how that's done. That's beautiful stuff right there. Yeah, Joey's on point, man. His pitching arm is working all the way over here now today. (laughs) 
He's got it. He's got it working. I'm clicking the mouse today with the left hand, actually. <laughs> it's got Ooh. it. Nice. Did you have to ice that down? I told you, Jake. Jake, I was coming off after every inning. I was getting the rub, you know. Yeah. They were taking care of a lot of, of pitches yesterday. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, man. Complete game. Complete game. Nobody else wanted to pitch, huh? Pitchers Their uh, bull, bullpen was That's empty for the, for the CHGO. Matt's friend Trent actually was, was warming up with me. If if we had to make a call to the pen, I, I had right. Trent in mind. But okay. that was our only other pitching option. And shout out to my buddy Trent, who is coming off of some pretty recent shoulder surgery. <laughs> <laughs> so he was telling me, he's like, yo, dude, yo. I think I might have to be DH or, or ma- like at best play the infield. Like I can't be in the outfield because I can't throw that far because my shoulder's yo, still messed man. up. So but he was still other- like, but dude, I want to play. I want to play. The only other option was a guy coming off surgery. Yeah. All right, I gotta get yeah. out there. I gotta help some guys. Also, out. like the, the the ump occasionally would call one of Joey's throws illegal for being too high or this or that. Really? I don't know what any of the rules are for Wait, softball that was a thing? pitching. So yeah, there's a six six uh, foot to twelve foot height limit. So anything under six is flat and illegal. Anything over twelve is illegal as well. But it's it's you know you're not Wait, getting what softball. Were you playing sixteen, 16 inch, inch? Which okay. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Now I understand. Okay. All right. Uh, two things. Will. We did get an answer from Bulls Central. Uh, even if they were to acquire that second round pick, they would have to trade it no matter what. Um, That's what I thought. And also, Probably. Chicago Bulls Central says, Will's an amazing writer. If you haven't checked out his articles on CHL, oh, make sure Bulls you do. Central. You should. Hey, That is correct, Hayes. Hayes. So that nice. is correct to the people Hayes. at Intel. He has told so no nice. lies. We, we take Thank that you. as just, you know, common knowledge. Yeah, man. It's part for the this course. Dude, you don't just writer, get names great Bulls the coverage without doing these kind of things. That's oh, what shucks. you do. That's why you need that CHGO membership. <laughs> That's what you need it for. You want more goat. More goat in your diet. A little bit more goat. Uh, goat in your diet. <laughs> yes. It's a good thing, man. You ever had goat? Mm. I can't say I have. Can't say I've had the pleasure. Mutton? Mm. Yes. Not, Loving that mutton. Not at the top of my <laughs> list of proteins. Nothing like this mutton. Uh, all right, guys. Let's, let's talk playoffs. <laughs> Conference finals begin tonight. I'm so excited. Eastern Conference on deck first. Game one, Celtics Heat tonight. Yes. Quick recap of uh, their regular season series. The Celtics won it two to one. Okay. Um, they were and, whooping uh, too, right? What? They were whooping their ass, right? Yes, they were. Okay. Also, this is a rematch of the 2020 in the bubble Eastern Conference Finals. That's true. And when you think about the trios that are leading these respective teams, Jimmy, Bam, and Hero. Mm-hmm. Tatum, Brown, and Smart, Mm -hmm. same trios from those 2020 bubble conference finals. A lot of the supporting cast and role players on each team are different at this point. What is uh, one thing that jumps out to each of you guys as could be the tipping point for either of these teams in this series? Oh, for the Heat, the three-point shooting. Yeah, That's going to be it. If their three-point shooting is on like it had been all season, which is the reason why they're the number one seed. Well, one of the reasons why they're the number one seed. If that's on, they're, they're extremely hard to beat. There's nothing you can do to stop that because their ball movement is perfect. You know what I'm saying? Their scheme is perfect. It's, it's really great. Their half court, nah, not so much. You know what I'm saying? Not so much. But they're a team that likes to get out in transition and just keep the ball moving, you know, and finding the open shooter. Uh, I don't know how P.J. Tucker continues to get left open from the corner, but it continues to happen. He's crazy, dude. He's like 37. Yeah, man. But when you all you got to do is stand and shoot threes in the corner. I mean, you know, it could prolong a career, baby. But, yeah, if that happens for them, yeah, they should, they should have a good series here. With Boston, I mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, they're like number one offense and defense. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's really Boston tough. Boston's so freaking good. They're just so good at every single aspect. They've got something for everything that you like to do. If you want to be finesse – if you want to shoot the threes, if you want to go half court, if you want one on one, if you want to bang down low, if you want the big man to start <laughs> shooting, they they got all of those things, man. So I, it, they're going to be tough to beat. They really are similar teams in a lot of ways. That's they true. They love to switch. That's true. They love to Elite shoot defensively, Elite yeah. defensively, and then they've got that go to big wing scorer. Mm-hmm. And so I think a lot of it is just going to come down to like who's better between Jimmy and Tatum. Mm. Um, I think Tatum's a better player. It pains me to say. Say it. But what? What do you want me to say? Whoa. Between Jimmy and Tatum. Oh, give me Tatum. But you ain't got to say it. I think I take a Tatum. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think I'm taking Tatum. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Bill Simmons. I don't know how I can <laughs> go ahead. No, talk good. after that. But, you good. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> I'm I'm also curious, like the against the Bucks and the Bulls, 
you know, found this out the hard way as well. Like you just, you cannot drive into the lane yeah. against Giannis and Brooke Lopez. So yeah. I'm curious to see how they attack the basket and how much different that will be. Um, three point shooting is going to be huge on both sides. Uh, I, I just think the Celtics are so deep with their defense. Yeah. I mean, like if Grant Williams is playing like he did in game seven. Jeez. That's yeah. like their sixth guy. Yeah. And if everybody else is healthy, if, you know, Robert Williams comes back. Marcus Smart, I think, is dealing with some foot soreness. Yeah. So he's got to play. Same thing on the other side. Kyle Lowry's got to play. So, mm-hmm. I, I mean, these are two incredible teams. The series a couple of years ago was awesome. The right. play that stands out to me was Tatum driving right side and Bam just, like, denied. <sighs> that was amazing. They were going to the fin- that um, was the finals right there. You're like, you're going to the finals. That's, like, top three <laughs> playoff block that mm-hmm. I can think of it off was the top of my head. No, it was special. Yeah, um, the, the slow-mo replay of that from the beh- like the backboard camera yeah. angle yeah. was absolutely was, insane. And just like went back. Yeah. yeah, wow. it was yeah that was like the LeBron uh, block on Tiago Splitter and oh. the LeBron block on Iguodala. Oh, was like, right. The, the super impressive chase down block of a 45-year-old Andre Iguodala. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that was so impressive. Oh, Career-defining moment for LeBron James. I love <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I can always count on it. It's never late. The train is never late. The hate train is always on time. And I appreciate him so much for I it. I spit nothing but facts, Dave. You know this. Uh, Iguodala's not 45. Uh, yeah, he was 45 then. Now he's 52. <laughs> uh, obviously, oh, health is is going or could be going to be a factor in this series as well. Sure. We still don't know about Kyle Lowry's availability for Miami. He's been dealing with a hammy. He tried to give it a go in a couple of those games in Miami second round against Philly, and it did not go well. It did not. So it's looking like Kyle Lowry, you know, not going to play game one. Will he come back in this series at all? And if so, how effective will he be? And then for Boston, you know, you've got all these guys, you know, both of the Williams have been dealing with injuries. You know, what's going to happen with Robert, uh, Time Lord in this series? Mm. And Marcus Smart, I, I just popped on Twitter just now to see if we have word yet. It's still to be determined. I guess they're going with game time decision. Yeah. They're going to take the fine. Ime, uh, Ime Udoka was talking earlier today saying Marcus Smart still has swelling and soreness in that mm. foot. Yeah. And he is questionable for game one tonight. Mm. And we know just how much Marcus Smart does for this Celtics team. A lot. <laughs> My goodness. Um, if, you know, if, if I'm given an edge here, it's that I think that beyond Tatum, there are at least a couple of Celtics who can have an insane game yeah. and carry them to a win if Tatum has an off night, whereas I don't have that same belief for anyone behind Jimmy Butler on this, mm. on this Heat team. I'm not saying that Bam is a scrub and Bam can't have a monster game here or there. He can. Or the same thing can, you know, can't be true for Tyler Hero. Mm-hmm. I, I think that this giant like bevy of Celtics defenders mm. will take turns locking up Tyler Hero and giving him a really tough time in this series. And they have more like two-way players. Yes. You know, Correct. like the if the if the Heat are having a hard time scoring, they're not going to be able to put Struess and uh Hero on the court at the same time because mm-hmm. The Celtics are just going to go after those guys. Right. Yeah. Um, and even having just one of them, like you look at this Celtics roster, they don't really have any weak points. I mean, the, the Bucks were attacking Jalen Brown, who's like a right. fantastic wing defender. <laughs> and who's the worst <laughs> defender in the starting lineup, which That's is crazy. crazy. It's crazy. That's I mean, they're insane. just so complete. Yeah. Um, it's so hard to find any weaknesses in their lineup. So I think for me, that is, you know, regardless of who has a better series between Jimmy and Tatum, like, mm-hmm. The, the depth and just, like, the quality and versatility of the other guys, mm. I think, on the Celtics kind of pushes me over the top. Yeah. And, and then the other interesting element to this is, are, are we going to get turned back to clock Al Horford still in this series? I mean, where would you guys put Al Horford's performance in these playoffs so far on the list of most surprisingly awesome players in these 22 NBA playoffs so far. Because that one game he had yeah. against Milwaukee, yeah. where he put up 30-plus, including that absolute facial on Yon. Wow. It was – it was he had one of the – to answer your question, I, I got Jordan Poole first. Okay. Then I got him. But he had one of those moments like you were talking about with Bam, like with that block. Like once I saw that, I was like, oh, shit, they're going to the finals. That moment when Giannis did that move and stared at him and he looked at him like, all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, mm-hmm. oh, snap, that's different. It was like you the same as the Luca Booker 
Yes, correct. Absolutely right. It was like, that's different. You know what I mean? Right. And he went in and okay. went off. And I love that he did that because he did that for all the big, nice guys out there. Like, okay, you keep running up like you crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you going to get dealt with, man. All right, bro. All right. I love that aspect of it. But, yeah, it was very surprising. And it just made them even more scary. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just giving them that element. Like, oh, snap, I got to do – that dude can give me 32? Uh-oh, that's very terrifying. And also, I think they're super hungry. I know Miami's hungry. They're super hungry, man. I think they're starving. Yeah. Because they've been there. They keep getting there and not being able to get over. Like, Miami's gotten there. You know what I'm saying? And they've gotten to the finals and things like that. Hell, P.J. Tucker has a ring. You know what I mean? Like, they have that pedigree. Nobody on Boston's really got that. You know what I mean? They got no. a bunch of guys – who at least just heads keeps hitting the ceiling. But they've gotten they to this it. level, the Eastern Conference Finals. Exactly, that's what I mean. this core. Is this their third time, Yeah, I believe? That's what I mean. They, yeah. keep, they keep hitting their head on that ceiling. Right. You know what I'm saying? And they, they haven't been able to break that glass and get through. And I think they're just, just really hungry <laughs> to get, the, get on through. The, on the Al Horford uh, topic, mm-hmm. I don't remember if I said this to you guys or somebody else, but Al Horford obviously played at Florida with Joakim Noah. Yes, he did. Mm-hmm. Yes, he did. And came out in the same year mm-hmm. as Joakim Noah, mm-hmm. 2007 draft. Joakim's been out of the league, what, five years? And Horford is like <laughs> six. It's crazy. Oh, don't, <laughs> Matt's going to get upset. That. Matt's going to get upset. He You're played discounting. in the bubble, which was 2020, which was two years ago. Okay? Give a man Joakim some credit. Yeah. Take that in, Eric. <laughs> Joakim's jo- been, oh, been out of the league. league for five years. Utter horse shit. Take it in. Has him jo- a two. Joe Kim has been out of the league for two years. Thank and you. Al Horford is still playing and Seven. scoring career high playoff nights in the playoffs. It's wild. Yeah, it's very wild. It's hey, incredibly Joe wild. Joe Kim would still be playing if he wanted to be. <laughs> he's done. I know. He's living retired life, living in Hawaii. I'm not saying he's living in Malibu, out of the living in New he's York. He's no longer playing. Popping through Chicago. You're not gonna win this one, man. Yeah. Living his best <laughs> life. The best thing to do is just lean Nobody's into Nobody's ever accused me of hating on Joe Kim before. That was. <laughs> Matt it's hears weird. I don't like to be that, on that side of it. <laughs> it doesn't. He doesn't want to hear truth about Joe Kim Noah. It's not his thing. He doesn't want to hear anything truthful about. What, what him. Are you t- that's that's factually inaccurate <laughs> to say he's been out of the league for five or six years. He played for the Clippers in the bubble, which was 2020, 2020, 2022. <laughs> That span of time is not five or six years. He's been out of the league. I am five, no six mathematician, years. <laughs> but I do know that. He's been out of the league five, six years. He was on the team, but he's he been out of the league a while. He's, you know, you oh, know what they mean. We're just going to completely you know discredit saying. the minutes he gave the Memphis Grizzlies a few years ago? I think we are because he's fucking crazy. How dare you? <laughs> what the coach tell him? Joe Kim, I got your back. <laughs> Always and forever. What, what bigger stats tell him? Joe Kim is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Matt Peck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. But yes, we love Joe Kim Noah. You're not going to make us into Joe Kim Noah haters. That's not what you're going to do here. Nobody will. Can't we do it. We love Nobody Joe Kim Noah. So, um, you know this. All right, so real quick, we do have our official series predictions here for the Eastern <laughs> Conference Finals. We're all taking Boston. Yeah, yeah. I'm taking them in six. Will's taking them in six. Big Dave, you did what I was tempted to do, which yeah. is take them in five. Yeah, Dave, I Dave know, always does what I wish I did. <laughs> what I'm what I'm seeing here is a split I don't worry about <laughs> in Miami. I'm seeing a split in Miami. Yeah. I'm seeing Boston taking care at home court. Yeah. Miami manages to find a way to keep this series alive in game five to force a game six. Boston yeah. closes it out at home. That's how I see this going down. I, I Yeah. Like, that's very logical. <laughs> Everything you just said right there it makes complete sense. I just don't, I don't see it, man. And, and, and I could say six. I, I mean, it could be, and who knows Miami could be that team and turn this around and win it. But man, like you guys said, like in the playoffs, it comes down to who's the best player on the floor. You know what I mean? And, out of your, out of the three best, like I can say, two of them are on Boston. You know what I'm saying? The two best players, and the best is on Boston. And Jason Tatum, he's he's the best player on that floor, man. But I'm not trying to discredit Jimmy about anything that he's doing. He's had a great playoffs. He really has. He he has carried this team. Mm-hmm. But Boston's road also, man. When you beat the champs, that also elevates you to me as well. And like you were saying, Will, like they should have won that in five. You know what I mean? It shouldn't they even should've. win seven. And when you said that, that's what I thought of yeah. when I when I made that prediction. Like, damn, he's right. Mm-hmm. Like if they're doing that to the champs, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like this could really be a problem. But again, again, guys, I suck at predictions, so take that for what it's worth. <laughs> again, it's also it's not just the best player because obviously you need to have a great player. Yeah. And that's why the Suns got their ass whooped. By Luca, yeah, he was the best yeah. player in that series. Yeah, true indeed. But they played against Giannis, and Giannis, I think, was the best player without a doubt. And that's the doubt. first person ever in NBA history to have 200 points, 100 rebounds, and 50 assists in yeah. a series. He's yeah. he's insane. 
It's not fair. It had never but been done before. It's not fair how good But it is. goes back to what I was saying about the quality of their depth yeah. and their supporting cast. Yeah. I just think that is so much better than what the Heat have. I think the Heat are a really good team. I think we're probably underrating them a little bit just because of how good Boston has played. So that, that was kind of why I went with six, but it's going to be a great series either way. These yeah. are going to be tight games. I yeah. don't see 30-point blowouts. Yeah. Excuse me. No, and he's right. Just for the record, so we're all taking the Celtics in this series. I took the Celtics to come out of the East when we first did our playoff prediction. Yeah, I was a coward. He I should have done that. I Y'all had to the Bucks in the finals. Matt wants all, always wants credit. Hey, man, you came <laughs> with my boy Joaquin today, so I had to throw Nobody that back in your face. Nobody came at your boy Joaquin. Yes, you did. <laughs> Saying he has, bleh, hasn't played in five or six years. You came with my boy Joaquin, so I had to remind all the people that of the three of us, I'm the only one who correctly guessed that the Celtics were coming out <laughs> of the conference semis and not the Bucks. You would have did that if Joaquin wasn't even mentioned in this show so please don't be using him no, as a scapegoat. No I was holding on to that You were going to do that regardless. I was, I was trying to hold on to it for later once oh, the Celtics please. actually get past the heat and are in the finals <laughs> as I predicted them to be. Who you say was going to the finals in the West? Warriors. You had the Warriors? I had the Warriors. You had the Doves? Y'all had the Suns. I sure did. Had them Suns baby. Listen, yeah, ain't going. Listen to me Listen people. to the gambler. Matt is turning into Mark K with the, with the receipts now. No, he's been that. What do you mean? <laughs> this, oh, this is new for you. Oh, okay. All right, this is new for you. All right. This, this is Joey is. does not yet know how well I <laughs> yeah. love to remind people Seriously, when I'm right. Petty Peck is a thing, sir. This is a thing. It's what he is. It's what he lives for. He loves being right. Be true to your heart, Big Dave. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to be himself. Uh, be all right, himself. so we're all taking the Celtics. Game one tonight yes. in Miami. Enjoy watching that. Go have some fun on that points bet app. Don't download it if you haven't already using promo code CHGO <laughs> to get those two risk-free bets up to $2,000. And live your bet life live like it. I do, like Will's cousin Eric does. Yes, he does. Like Joey does. Oh, definitely. And keep it locked right here on your CHGO Sports YouTube channel because we got more content for you guys. We got CHGO bets at 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then we got uh, Sox and Cubs postgame later tonight after the Sox doubleheader with the Royals. Two of them, thanks. And we got uh, Cubs and Pirates. So stick around for Cubs postgame as well. And the NBA lottery. And the oh. NBA lottery. Will's on his way He's there right way. now to cover it. Guess what? The Bulls aren't in it. No. Flex. No Benny. No Michael. No Horace. Yes. No nobody. No nobody. No He's reps. No Jerrion. No. <laughs> no As if he would go to that. Uh, yeah, so it's not doing anything. Will <laughs> have, a, have a good time at the draft lottery. Thanks. Let us know if anything crazy goes down. Uh, follow Will for all of his Bulls coverage at Won't Golly on Twitter. Dave's at Bow BAWL Sports. Bow. Bulls underscore Peck here. We are CHO underscore Bulls. Shout out to Eric, our visitor for the day, our producer Joey, slash our star pitcher. CHGO Sports Softball, 1-0, people. Mm. Until tomorrow, same time, same place, we'll have our pal Sean Hyken, hey. NBA writer for Bleacher Report, Wait hanging it. out with us in studio tomorrow, 3 o'clock, Chicago time. See you there. See you right. Be good. <laughs>